Hello everyone, I'm Women International Master Canaric and I'm using the chesswithcanaric.com website to record this with video. You can also check the chess.ie platform that we're working on as well. In this video, I want to show you a game from Gary Kasparov in the Olympiad of 1977. Uh, here Kasparov had the white pieces and he played the pawn to e4. His opponent played pawn to c5, that's the Sicilian defense. And on knight f3, black played knight to f6. Knight to f6 is not a very common move when uh, playing the Sicilian, but uh, Kasparov's opponent played so, and Kasparov continued with knight c3. There, there is, of course, some other theory by pushing the pawn to e5. But what was played in the beginning was in the game was knight to c3. Here, uh, black played pawn to e6, and as usual, like in all the open Sicilians, white played the pawn to d4, black captured, and Kasparov captured back. So here, black played the bishop to b4. What's the threat here? Black has created a pin, which means that now, the pawn on e4 is in danger. Let's always remember that when we have one of our pieces pinned, this piece is not a good defender. And if uh, this piece is in, is in an absolute pin, it means it's not a defender at all. Black can simply capture the pawn or maybe capture the knight first, then capture the pawn on e4. Both are options for black. So here, Kasparov decided to save the pawn on e4 by pushing it and attacking the knight on f6. The knight moved to d5. And now what's the threat? Black is now attacking our c3 knight twice with two pieces, with the bishop on v4 and the knight on d5. Here, the threat then is going to be Black wants to capture our knight with the knight, and when we capture back, the bishop captures, and that's going to be a four king, the king, and the rook at the same time, winning a pawn plus a four. So we need to defend the c3 square one more time, and what better way than to develop our bishop on d2? Here, uh, we also are threatening to capture the black knight and have a good position as white. Black here needs to decide to uh, needs to capture our knight on c3. So black captured the knight. And here white has to decide. Should white capture with the bishop first? And then when black captures with the bishop, we capture with the pawn. Or should we right away capture on c3 with our pawn? Now what's the difference? They look like we're reaching almost the same position because in both cases, we're having an isolated pawn on the A file. We're having doubled pawns on the C file, doubled and isolated pawns on the C file. Well, the difference is this one tempo that we're gaining when we are capturing, when we're starting to capture with the pawn that's on B3, B2. When we capture on C3, we're attacking the bishop now, which means that black now needs to move away the bishop and we gain a tempo. And in an opening, this one gain tempo is very important. While if we move back and we had captured with our bishop and black trades, we capture back with our pawn. Here, a black is not losing time and it's black's turn actually to play. And black even has a good move here, maybe queen c7, attacking both our pawns on e5 and c3. And black will be doing good in this position. So going back, of course, Kasparov started by capturing on c3, not with a bishop, but with the pawn to gain this one tempo, making the black bishop move away. Now, Kasparov's opponent was worried about the g7 square. So let's say he was worried probably that the bishop just moves away to, let's say, e7. The queen might attack the g7 square after castle white will continue the attack by playing bishop to h6 and winning the exchange, at least in this position. So going back, uh, 
Black decided then to move away the bishop and protect the g7 square by playing bishop to f8. But of course, such moves are not good moves because we're supposed to be developing our pieces in the opening, not taking them back to where uh, they were. So here, white played the bishop to d3. If I'm thinking, where is the best square for my bishop that's on f1? d3 is definitely the best square because I have a very good diagonal. Uh, and uh, on other squares, let's say c4, I will be, uh, let's say, black will be able to attack my bishop since the bishop is hanging. Black can attack our bishop. Also on b5 with pawn to a6. So best is to have the bishop on a safe square, protected, not hanging, having very good diagonals. So bishop to d3 is placed. Now here, if we just try to evaluate this position, we can very easily and simply say that white is doing much better than black because of simply the lead in development. White is ahead in development. White has developed three pieces already, ready to castle. Black hasn't developed any pieces at all. Here, black played the pawn to d6, attacking our pawn on e5. If we capture the pawn, black wants to develop the bishop uh, by capturing on d6. But of course, we don't want to be helping our opponent. I don't want to capture and help black develop the dark square bishop. So, and but we also need to protect our pawn on e5. Queen to e2 was played. I'm developing a fourth piece, my queen, protecting my e5 pawn. Here, black blundered and played knight to d7. Now, why is this a blunder? You can pause the video and try to figure out why this was a blunder. How did white continue the game here? This is a blunder because it's blocking our bishop that was defending the e6 square. So here, what white played, what Gary Kasparov played, was right away capture on e6, because now after this sacrifice, if black captures on e6, the h5 e8 diagonal is going to be very weak. And this is a common concept, concept that we can use in openings. Whenever my opponent has moved the f pawn or has captured with the f pawn and, and the f7 pawn is not there anymore, we can often use this diagonal to attack. And here, that's what was going to happen. We could just play queen to h5. And this is a typical way to attack here. Uh, if uh, pawn is blocking, we can sacrifice, capture that pawn as well. Let's say black's capturing. We're capturing back. Only move king to e7. We bring a new piece, of course, to the attack. And here, what to play? Whatever black plays, they're going to lose material. The queen here. The only way to continue is knight to f6, and we can capture with the queen on f6, check, capture the queen, check, and of course this is going to be winning for white. And if we move back, let's say black does not play the pawn to g6, but uh, just moves the king to e7, but it's uh, almost the same. We play again bishop to uh, g5, and we'll be able to win a lot of material here, because knight to f6 will be the only move, and when I capture check, black captures, will still be able to win the queen. It's very important to notice some patterns in the position. So here, we, could, we will be able to use the skewer concept to win the queen, because I can simply sacrifice my bishop on f6. That's a skewer already. Black must capture, and that's another skewer. And next move, we're winning the black queen, and of course, winning the game. So going back, when Kasparov played the knight to e6, of course his opponent saw all these dangers that are uh, going to uh, come up when he captures with the f7 pawn. So instead of capturing, at the same time white attacking the queen on d8, black decided to move away the queen to b6. So here again. Again, it's very important to notice some ta tactical patterns. That's why it's very important for us to practice different tactical concepts like uh, pins, discovered attacks, discovered checks, double, double attacks, and forks. Here, it's very important to notice that my queen is on the same file as the black king, and I have chances of discovered checks. Uh, and I should try to see what's the best way to use this. 
and here Kasparov played one more move and his opponent resigned. Again, you can pause the video to try to figure out the move. And the move played was here. Uh, of course, capture starting with a capture on, on e d6 works as well. But Kasparov played knight to c7 and his opponent resigned because this is already a fork. And we've already won a pawn on e6. And now if black does not capture my knight, just moves away the king, we'll be able to capture a rook. So we'll be up a pawn and a rook, plus a very good position. While if black captures our knight to stop the fork, then we will be using our discovered check to win the black queen and also win the game. Because even after winning the black queen, so we have a very good position. It's going to be a very easy win for white. So after knight to c7, of course, uh, Kasparov's opponent resigned and white won.